Hello, so today we're going to do a video on the Jeep Grand Cherokee. This video is going to be split up in two parts, but it's going to have the same introduction for each of them for the front and the rear brakes. I'm going to be doing a full brake job, including the parking brakes, which are uh, prone to failure. So the first thing we'll look at is the uh, brake discs that I picked up, or brake rotors, whatever you want to call them. So these are CarQuest Platinum Plus. I always try to buy the best brakes that I can afford to put on a vehicle. Because it seems like it's always my luck that as soon as I put on new brake rotors, I'll be going down some big long hill and I'll go and warp them on the first shot. So if you buy good rotors, they're always going to give you a much better warranty on them. And I've never had to return anything from CarQuest. So that's uh, the road I'm going. These ones are coated. If you weren't buying coated rotors, they'd be covered in oil. So you'd have to hose them off with brake fluid or brake cleaning fluid. It's got the minimum thickness here, 28.5 millimeters, for this particular rotor. This is the front, it's vented. Comes in a nice uh, packaging. I don't know if this is uh, chemically uh, controlled for uh, protecting the rotors or not. This is the uh, rear. On this vehicle, it's got a parking brake is on the inside of here. And again, it's coated all the way around. If it wasn't coated, it'd be covered in oil, you'd have to clean it off and then paint it so that it didn't rust up right away. Depending on the type of wheels you've got, it shows more than others. But I always tend to paint them when I put them on the vehicle. So the next thing I'm going to look at is the receipt from buying this. So this is something that you may or may not be aware of or not. But when you go into a store and pay cash, they always have an account called uh, Preferred Cash Customer wherever you go and if they don't put you down as preferred cash customer at the store get them to bill it out to a garage or something so basically what I do is I tell them everything I need they give me a price and then I'll tell them well can you do any better I'll buy everything if you give me a good price and this usually works out in my favor so list price on uh, one of these rotors this is Canadian dollars in 2020 was 121 a rotor and I got them for 86 so as you can see like I saved 35 dollars on each of the rotors and uh, you save a lot of money by doing this you can easily save uh, 100 bucks on a brake job so like I said always make a relationship with the place you're buying parts from and always go back to them I don't tend to shop around like I use CarQuest, which has got another name in the States, but you can still buy CarQuest parts. You go down to Napa. If you're a Napa person, that's fine. Wherever you go, it doesn't matter to me. But I tend to buy the best parts that they've got and try to make a relationship with them so that uh, I get good pricing. They recognize my voice on the phone or my name when I introduce myself when I call. I try to be uh, very polite with them, and it works out really well. I've saved thousands of dollars by doing that. Or I order online if you want to go that route too. So uh, we'll take a look at uh, what we've got here. Might as well look at the uh, brake pads first. So again, these are the uh, platinum, the high-end ones. So these are the uh, parking brakes. I'm just going to tighten this thing up here so it doesn't flop around. You get a set of those. You need to buy the uh, kit separately. It comes with some white looking grease, I assume for the threads. You get the uh, brake pads here. They also come with a bit of uh, grease, which is good. Come with the stainless sliders. I can't read that language. Maybe it's in English on the other side, I'm not too sure. And when you look at the pads, they got a burnishing compound on them to break them in onto the rotors. It doesn't take very much by the looks of it. Some of them have a uh, scratching pad there to make noise to tell you when the uh, pad is worn out. You can measure that. I don't know how many millimeters that is. So that would be your matching pair. Now you wouldn't normally put the uh, grease on a pad that's got any coating on it. If it's a stainless shim or whatever this stuff is, you're probably going to use the grease on these parts here, which we'll see as we get 
putting things together. So those are pretty small. I think those are probably the rear. Besides that, always get lots of uh, brake clean so you can clean the rotors off. The brake dust, whether it has asbestos or not, you're not supposed to breathe it. So you're going to want to hose everything off onto like a piece of cardboard and throw it out. You don't want to hose it off on the floor and then sweep it up later. It's not good for your health. I always buy the non-chlorinated brake fluid or brake cleaner. So uh, it's not as poisonous if you heat it up. I bought some uh, lubricant. I wasn't sure if it came with these pads or not, but it turns out it does. So this is the way to go for any of this stuff because it's like a couple bucks or something. You got everything you need, you use it and you're done. You don't need to worry about storing it. Like this Loctite, I seem to buy like a bottle of it every time I use it. And it just goes bad. Like that's like four lifetime supply for somebody. So again, you can just get a pouch of the uh, red Loctite. I have that because I've got wheel spacers on this vehicle. So it's important to use uh, Loctite on them. Some uh, copper anti seize You can get the uh, gray stuff, whatever suits your purpose. So uh, if you're going to reuse your rotors, you'd use a micrometer to check them. So you could check that measurement I gave you initially across. But I just I know that I pretty much destroy my rotors. Being in Canada, they rust and fall apart. It's not something that is a, a long-term purchase. So you just bin them. Need a torque wrench for the uh, wheels and the. Uh, wheel spacers, metric wrenches. Use this for compressing the uh, brake calipers. Might need this to remove the uh, rotors depending on what's going on. I normally have a 10 pound sledgehammer but I don't have one here to get the wheels off. But I, I normally I put the uh, anti seize on the uh, centers of the wheel hub so they come off typically. But you might need a sledgehammer to remove the wheels. I did a video for my Honda Civic where I showed how to take the wheels off and you can see how I did that there. Need some earmuffs, some glasses, some gloves. I've got uh, impact sockets there and then uh, I've got a three quarter inch impact gun underneath of the uh, brake pads here. You can certainly do it by hand. It's just going to take a bit longer. There's nothing wrong with that. And then some uh, wheel chocks. You should have uh, the wheel chalk for at least two of them. These ones are a little bit small. I think I read somewhere that a uh, OSHA requirement is that the wheel chalk has to reach like a quarter of the height of the wheel. So you can imagine with the transport truck that the wheel chocks would be gigantic. So I think that is going to be almost it for the introduction. One other thing to look at is that you'll need to get like a, a three ton jack to do this job. You can probably do it with a smaller jack, but at the same time, you're working it pretty hard. So get a three-ton jack. I broke the wheels off of this one, actually, unfortunately. So uh, I had it lifted up a, a car, and then just tried to move it, and I snapped the wheels off. So I've, it still works, though. Be a second. Drag it around on there. And you need a jack stand. It'd be better to have two when you're doing the back. If you have two, you can get both wheels off at the same time and use one as a reference to the other. If not, you can take pictures of the each side. Then I've got some uh, stainless diamond plate here. If you were putting your jack stand in the dirt, some jack stands have the corners, just uh, little plates welded onto it, but it's still, if you're in the dirt, it's better to just put it on a steel plate. So there's a factory that's uh, wrapping up a construction job. I've been buying stainless off of them lately. I got a pretty good collection of stainless. And then uh, I'm going from completely dead fried brakes. So when I clamp in my uh, brake uh, calipers, it's going to be a problem for the uh, master cylinder here. So this is going to probably end up overflowing. So you need to keep an eye on this as you're doing each wheel. And only do one wheel at a time, otherwise when you push in one caliper, it'll push the other caliper out on the other side and it could pop the, the uh, piston right out, so don't do that. So just do one wheel at a time. Other than, like I said, you can 
do some things to hold the pistons in with a C-clamp if you need to on the back to look at each side. So you could use a little vacuum pump to suck the brake fluid out of here to prevent it from overflowing. If it does overflow, you need to have a garden hose ready and hose down the whole area because this will remove the paint on your vehicle quite quickly. So that's uh, not good. So I guess I'll shut this off and now it's for 10 minutes in already just doing the introduction. We're going to take a, a wheel off of here and get going on the front. And like I said, the other video is going to have the same introduction. And also I'll take the a back wheel off and start doing it on the back. All right, so I got the uh, vehicle jacked up here. So I just grabbed onto the uh, mount for the uh, transfer case here. Then I'm going to put the uh, vehicle down on that cross member there on that jack stand. There was some pitting in the concrete that was causing trouble, so I ended up using the plate inside. I actually had a coworker who was killed. I wasn't present, but he was at home and he was under a vehicle and it was on an uneven floor and it fell down on top of him. So I'm always careful. I would normally use more jack stands if I had them available, but uh, this is adequate for the job. So I always put weight down on that jack stand so that that way if the jack was to fail, nothing would even move. So I'll just uh, put the weight down slowly. So that's down now. Put that up out of the way. Things are looking good. It's just a bit off the ground. I just want to check the video and see that we're still in scene. I'm going to start taking this apart. So I'm going to take the wheel off and the wheel spacer off and go from there. This is 19 millimeter, but these are not factory fasteners. Say rubber is not very good for this socket. Because normally you want to kind of grab onto the socket and help it go. So I would use different kind of gloves. Because there's a lot of bouncing. Initially, you kind of grab the socket and take all the slack out. You see how much easier it is for the tool to work. And I typically slide the wheel underneath the vehicle. So these had red Loctite on them. You can actually smell it. That's kind of funny. So that's on kind of good. These have been on for two years, I think, since I did the lift. This is Spider Tracks brand, so I'll have to clean these up. I did a video on how to clean these up, but they're doing pretty good. That's the first time I've had them off. You can see I painted this when I did it, uh, put them on the last time, but it's starting to fail. And you put the copper anti-seize around there. So that's good, my uh, rotor's gonna come off. So I just compressed this uh, piston here. So what you're going to do is put this on the back of the caliper and then this part is going to push on the brake pad. And this applies to way more than just the Jeep. I'm just using the Jeep as an example. The Honda needs a brake job too. I'll do it at some point. So I don't need the overall one anymore. This is a, a six inch clamp, and uh, you pretty much should have a six inch clamp for automotive work. You could try to reach in with a pry bar and take the uh, 
load off of the caliper that way, but this works really good. And then just obviously don't damage the uh, brake hoses. One thing that helps is when you're working on a vehicle is that if you turn the wheel initially so that the uh, caliper is sticking out, it gives you a bit better access to do some things. You could look with the flashlight, there's a groove in the back of the caliper. I think that's pushed in all the way. So now I'm just going to see what size wrench there. Looks like it's 12 to 15. Not 12. No, my eyes aren't as good anymore as I thought. 14. So it's the facing away from you, so you're going to tighten the motion. It's the opposite direction. So how about we're going to do this completely uh, real time, hopefully it's not too boring, I just want to show everything for the most part, like I could just stop and take these bolts out, but hey, why not just do the whole thing. It always helps to kind of just hit on the wrench to break the tension initially. change my mind so I'm not going to show removing the bolts completely so I'll get those off and then we'll move on to the next stage all right so I got the bolts out for the uh, caliper so we'll get that tied off I just have a zip tie I'm going to hook it on to so that just the pistons are in and everything else stays behind put the zip tie through a hole here Yeah, I'll just I'll do that after. Hopefully don't drop it in the video like I did in one of my other videos. So the next part is you have to take the caliper adapter off. So I have a 21 with a swivel. So definitely have the eyeglasses in case the swivel breaks. Now you can remove your pads and your rotor. If this was on tight, you'd have to beat on it with a hammer. But you want to be careful because your wheel bearings are right there, right? So you don't want to ruin your wheel bearings. It's pretty common you have to do a wheel bearing shortly after doing brakes. But uh, these ones are pretty fresh, so I'm hoping they're going to be all right. So I just got things kind of laid out on the table and we'll take a, a look at what we're removing. Alright, so this is why I wasn't really too serious about measuring the uh, thickness of the rotors. So if you look at this rotor, it's all rotten and it's kind of starting to swell up on the middle. So even though I painted it black the last time it was off, this didn't do uh, as good a job as what I expect from this coating here. And I'm parking on asphalt now instead of when I was parking on dirt, and that has a big difference. So uh, turns out the first pads I showed you were the front pads. The uh, rear pads are for single piston and they just fits into the piston. So uh, one thing to notice is that on my inner pad, which has got the two uh, piston marks on it, that I was down to steel on steel in this area here. And I was only getting like half of the uh, force that you would want. It kind of fits in that group pretty nicely. And then there's a lot of rust here where these uh, the pistons were pushing on. So it was always kind of spongy. You couldn't bleed it to get rid of the sponginess because the sponginess was part of the uh, actual pad assembly. And then uh, the wherever pads 
have a, a scratch mark on it to tell you when you're down to steel on steel. Whereas I don't know what this one is. You can kind of make out some of the wording, but not into very much detail. So it wasn't completely worn out on the other side, but it was worn on a wedge, if you can maybe see the contour on it. So it was uh, wearing very poorly. And again, you're not going to find anybody to turn these things anymore. It's uh, There was a quite a period of time where the uh, rotors weren't very good. You couldn't turn them. And pretty much everybody's gotten out of it now. So even if you could get better, <clears throat> better rotors now, you're not going to be able to do that. So people don't want to waste their time on it. Then for the uh, caliper carrier, you want to make sure that uh, these are greased. You've got a bit of grease you can put in these pins, you can pull them out. But be very careful with the rubber, so you put the rubber back where it needs to be so it's sealed. And then where these uh, stainless uh, sliders go, you use a wire brush and you'll clean off all of this and you chip it with a hammer if you have to. Because what's very common is that the uh, part under the stainless gets swollen from rust and then the uh, pad can't slide. So you think you've got a stuck caliper piston, but it's not. It's actually just the pads are stuck in the uh, carrier and can't move. So you have to go over that and clean off any rust, put the grease on here, put the new stainless sliders over it and grease them again. So I'm just gonna do that off camera and then we'll uh, get towards putting things back together. All right, so got things cleaned up. Now would have been a good time to paint these uh, caliper holders silver. I don't have any paint available to me right now. So the CarQuest grease is just a regular uh, green high pressure grease. I should have bought uh, slide kits for this. There's uh, one of the slides, is the uh, rubber bushing is disintegrated on it. It's right too close to the camera. So you can see that there's a bushing on here. It's not on this one. So that's uh, a bit unfortunate. That could be part of the reason I'm getting uneven uh, wear. Just push that in until it pops out all the way onto the rubber, or sorry, around the bushing. It's not too hard to put back together. I'll just work on that in a minute after off camera. So the next part is that I put a bit of the uh, grease on here because you don't want this to swell up and bind like I was talking about initially. So you put these on, they go on fairly easily. Well, it's always a bit of a mystery which way to go on at first. You'll figure it out. So now I gotta make this last for four breaks. So I'll be uh, sparing with it. I believe this is the one that goes on the inside. So just put a little bit on here. You can load it up right away. So just push it in. Obviously being careful not to contaminate anything. Checking the parts of the job. So when you load it up, you just have them out as far as possible. Again, you just lubricate this one. You don't need a lot. Put it into the slot. Oh, 
always a little bit challenging. Now, if you were having a hard time getting these in without pounding on them with a the hammer, then you would know that the uh, carrier has still got rust built up on it. You'd have to chip that rust off. So I've got to get this piece on here. Hopefully it behaves. All right, I suppose I'll have to turn off the camera a little bit and get that on, then we'll put the rotor on the vehicle. All right, so I got that pin set up, the caliper is loaded. I put the uh, copper anti-seize on the uh, rotor on both sides in the center. So you saw how nicely that came off. When I do the back, it's gonna be a huge battle getting that off. Then I put it on the uh, wheel spacer, which is an adapter style wheel spacer. And then I put it on the uh, hub as well. So I'm just gonna lower the camera a little bit and we'll start putting things together. As you can see, I turned the wheel to get the adapter off of there, the caliper adapter. So my hands are clean when I put on the rotor. These would have had an O-ring initially to hold the rotor on, but that's long gone on this vehicle. Had a couple brake jobs done on it. So you got that on there. Now I need to get the red Loctite. So this is a 262. The other stuff I had was for slip fit bearings, which is not the right stuff. Got some blockage in there. Hmm. That's the problem when you have these things for too long, they plug up. So I talked about this in my lift video a little bit, but it's important to get these all concentric together. Just get in my socket here, I need a 21, or 19 rather, which I seem to have misplaced. These need to be torqued down to uh, 90 foot-pounds. So this is a bit of a production, but basically you got to put them all on and tap on it with a plastic hammer, make sure everything is concentric and it's not caught somehow and uh, you'll have to take the vehicle for a drive or take the, and then take the wheels off afterwards or perhaps the next day and retorque these again back to 90 and they should be tight if they need more turns that would have mean something shifted and you didn't do it properly and you might need to take things off like I'd scrape the face of the hub with uh, a file and I scrape this and scrape the back, to make sure everything is completely flat. I'm just putting this on now because I don't have the O-ring and it makes it easier to hold the uh, rotor in position when I put the caliper back on. The 
be a good time to grease the front end if uh, you've changed any of the joints on it and need to grease. So I put close to 60,000 miles or 100,000 kilometers on these adapters and they've been no problem whatsoever. They're spider tracks. Had the wheels off uh, a couple times a year. And then I've never had these off until now since I did the lift video. But as you can see they're standing up good. And the reason they're standing up is because I'm taking good care of them. So I'll crank this thing up to 90 pounds. Like the one rare time a year that I would ever use this thing. You do a pattern on this like you would do on a, a wheel. Just going to get a hammer first and top, tap on this. So I guess it's important to make sure that everything is on, right? Well, you have everything apart. You should be taking a look around, looking at the CVs, seeing if they have any problems or at what have you. So you do the cross tightening. I'm not torquing it yet. I'm just doing the initial tightening first. This doesn't really count as torquing, in my opinion. All right, so I'll start with this one here. Torqued, go across, torqued, torqued, torqued. So I've done all five of them, but just in case I've forgotten one, hit this one, hit that one, this one, that one. So I did five all the way around. So now I know for sure that they're all done. I haven't missed any by accident, by being distracted or what have you. I find that that's a good practice to follow. I always did that when we worked on transport trucks. So that's good there. So now we'll start putting on the uh, adapter here. And these fit nicely over the uh, rotor. So I've put them out as far as I could possibly. Always a bit of fun trying to get the first bolt in. I got the bolt in, just squeeze these on. And I'm wondering if I have this correct. I'm kind of thinking that this should be on the inside. So I'm going to fix that. It was my intent to put it on the inside. Because if you're, uh, if these ever got locked up, you're going to typically wear your inside quicker than your outside. As you can see, it's much easier to put them on when they're on the table. because the pressure is coming from the pistons on this side so you want the uh, scraper to be on the inside as well. Yeah. 
harder to see. All right, so we're on there. I'm gonna tighten this uh, up a little bit more on my hand. Ah, put my ear mops on. So I just do that initially to make sure that it's uh, tight. Then I'll grab a wrench, which I don't have on me. So I'm gonna tighten that again by hand with a wrench, or just a torque wrench, I guess. I'm gonna reef on it, make sure it's good and tight. I'm not sure what the torque setting is on these, but it's just gonna be really tight. hundred. So we're just going to take a look at our work here, make sure we've got everything done that we were supposed to do. We've got the uh, caliper in the back. We'll look at it, look for any leaks or any junk piled up on it. It looks good. So we'll see if we can fit this over. can take a little bit of wiggling, but you can usually force it. I'm just trying to push the pistons in because they, they relax as you're working. You could use the clamp to do that as well. And you got to push the uh, sliding pins in out of the way. So I'm pretty close. But I need a bit more pressure here. Now when you put in these uh, two 12 millimeters, you need to look and make sure that these uh, slider pins are in the right position because they have like a, an oval head on them to stop them from spinning when you're tightening them. So that's something that needs to be uh, considered when you're doing this last little bit. Close now. It's got a, sorry, 14 millimeter, not 12 millimeter. Like I said, I would have recommended getting pin kits for this vehicle. It's got about 280,000 kilometers on it, I think. So, again, this has a torque setting. I've done this enough times, I don't know what the torque setting is. But when it feels right. So you'll take a look in your master cylinder, make sure it's not overflowing, and it didn't, so that doesn't need any real attention. Now, before I put this on the ground, I'm gonna just firm up the brakes. So just pump the brakes, just slowly. Take up any slack. That way when you drive out of where you're parked, you don't crash into anything. Firm. So at this point, you tighten up the wheel, and you put the wheel back on rather. Grease anything that needs to be greased, which I'm going to do a little bit off camera. And then move on to the next side, do the same thing there. And then the, when I'm back on camera will be the different part of the series for the back brakes. 
So uh, thank you for watching.